Not everything in audio is a big company. There's some small startups that do really cool things, and this is one of them. Let's check it out. Hey, I'm DMS. You're watching The Headphone Show presented by Headphones.com, and today we're talking about the Erebus Everest, also known in some of the discords as the Wan Phone because of the creator Wan. This is a from-the-ground-up headphone that started as a simple project and evolved into what you see before you. Let's talk about building comfort, then we'll get into sound. It's actually built surprisingly well. This is a different unit from what's currently in production. Right now he's doing an SLS chassis instead of the chassis you see here. So it's got a bit of a different texture, slightly different color to it. It'll be a little bit more robust. Looking up top, you might notice the headband actually looks pretty familiar. That's because this headband is actually supplied by Odyssey. It ends up they like supporting small projects because they were once a small project themselves. Cool thing is this means you could technically swap it out for a modern Odyssey suspension strap if you wanted to. But I don't mind the old style headband. It's very comfortable, it fits well, it's nice and spacious, and this is a pretty light headphone overall, so it's not like we're trying to deal with a ton of weight. The pads are sort of Audio Technica style, and inside we have a dynamic driver. You can tell from the impedance curve of this headphone that is tuned with a passive analog filter, which is honestly a really cool piece of the build as part of what makes this headphone unique overall and gives it its own special sound. Dual 3.5mm entry, which that is the way to go if you ask me. Simple, pretty universally compatible, there's a lot of options, and they're cheap to replace. Overall, it is a surprisingly well-built headphone, definitely standing out from the crowd and honestly stands up to the build of a lot of mass manufactured high quality headphones. It might not have the metal finish of a Focal, but it does have better build consistency than what I've seen from some DCA headphones with their pad variations. I can wear this headphone for a pretty considerable amount of time. It's not too clampy and it's not heavy either. So across the board, pretty good. I'm very satisfied with build and comfort. So with that said, Let's talk about sound. Starting off subjective first, we'll get into frequency response after that. So this is a timbre monster, something kind of reminiscent of the ZMFs of the world or the Borealis that I did a video on a while back. Just headphones that have great, great timbre. If you're not familiar with what that means, it's basically how a sound can be very natural sounding, non-fatiguing, it just sounds right. Bass extension is great, especially for an open back dynamic. In fact, I would say the bass extension is more reminiscent of things like your Sundaras of the world. Maybe slightly more rolled than that, but still very, very, very good bass extension on a dynamic. Dynamics themselves and impact are great. It slams pretty solid, but without sounding bloated or muddy or messy. The mid-range is probably my favorite part of this headphone overall because it has that classic good dynamic mid-range, which also is lending to its nice timbre. And the treble has pretty decent ear gain, but seems to get a little bit softer up top. So it's well extended in the treble, but not sharp, not sibilant, and not fatiguing. Overall, I think that lends this headphone to having a fairly inoffensive sound, but still being pretty strong across the board. It's pleasant. It's very, very pleasant, and it's a sound that grows on you a lot. Using it next to planars of similar tuning, the planars do sound more aggressive. And while at times I definitely would say some of those planars are more detailed, I tend to prefer the sound of the Everest just because it's more enveloping. It's more easy to listen for a long period of time and a bit easier to get myself lost in the music, and that happened a lot while I was evaluating it. I would sit down and start a being this against a planar or another headphone of similar price, and I'd put on the Everest, and before I knew it, I would just be staring off into space and five or six songs would go by and I'd forget what I was doing. That is the sign of a good headphone. Imaging is pretty solid too. It's not gonna blow your mind with laser sharp imaging, but it is pretty solid. It's better than something three blob like a 6XX, not as insane as something like an HG800. It just floats around in the middle, which is a good spot to be all things considered. I definitely think that center image is one of the stronger points in this headphone because it does build a better center image than some of the side images do, but things that are far out to either side definitely define themselves clearly. Soundstage is also pretty solid. It's not gonna blow your mind with soundstage. It's a bit more intimate, I think, because it is a dynamic that's pretty close to your ear, and it's not as large of a driver as something like a planar. 
but it's more than enough stage to be immersive. It definitely sounds open back. I'd say a bit more spacious than things like the Focal Clear, um, but not quite as spacious as some of the big ZMFs. Overall, subjective sound, that's really impressive, especially considering, once again, this is a startup brand. This isn't a long established company and this is their first headphone in the space. Detail and resolving ability definitely lends more to the sense of space of the headphone. You can hear a bit of the space things are recorded in, but it's not going to surpass the detail of your more advanced and super thin planars. With all of that said, I'm very pleased with the sound of the Everest. I find it very, very enjoyable. I think it's time we talk about objective sound and frequency response. This is a compensated measurement to diffuse field with an eight decibel slope downwards, bit of a preference target, one that we're adopting a little bit more often for rigs like this. Regardless, as you can see, it measures pretty well. We get very solid base extension, especially for a dynamic driver. Gives it a very, very, very slight warm tilt in the lower mid range. Solid treble throughout, ear gain is decent. This does recess a little bit around four kilohertz, three and a half kilohertz. Um, not bad though. And the highest point of the treble is between six and eight K. Now, interestingly enough, you really don't hear it like that. It, to me, it sounds like the highest point of the treble is somewhere between two and a half to three kilohertz, which based off this compensation, I would say is likely the case. Many headphones will show a bit of a dip at around 2.7 K. And when you look at the raw measurements of this headphone, it does show the highest point being around two and a half kilohertz. So overall, the treble above three to four K does sound a little bit lower than the treble at say two and a half K. And this gives it a inoffensive sound. Like I said, it's not sibilant, it's not grating, it's not grainy, and it's not harsh. It's very forgiving in the treble. And I quite like that. So overall, this is a very, very well tonal balance for the headphone. I'm sure you can tell looking at the graph of it, it's not all over the place. It's pretty linear. And one section or another isn't drastically higher or lower than the rest of it. And I think that really is what this headphone is overall. It's just very well balanced, well thought out from pretty much every angle, build, comfort, subjective sound, and objective sound. There's one thing I want to note though, given this has a passive analog filter system in it, it is going to respond differently on tube amps. I plugged this up to a dark voice and got considerably more bass out of it than I did on a solid state amp. So if your amp has very high output impedance, you're going to get a different response. That said, there are still hybrid tube amps and tube amps that do not have very high output impedance, so your mileage may vary. The vast majority of solid state amps, this sounds great. If you want to use it on tubes, you can. Just know it's going to respond a little bit differently. Anyway, I think that is going to wrap this video up. Everest. Well, like I said, it's a well-rounded headphone. I like it across the board, and I'm very excited to see what happens in the future, what they start to put out, because if this is this first entry into the headphone space, well, I have high hopes for the second. So guys, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can hit the forums or the Discord, both linked in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till the next one, guys. Peace.